Okay, so now we have question number seven from um, June 2016. Um, I actually just answered this question and forgot to press the record button. <coughs> so I've got to start all over again. No problem. Now, a particle of a P of mass 4 kilograms is attached to one end of a light, inextensible string. Okay, um, so you have P 4 kilograms, so it's going to have its weight acting vertically down. And its weight is going to be 4G, and Q has also got its weight acting vertically down. Okay, so you've got, this is 4G, and this is MG. Um... Okay, the string, okay, okay, the first plane is inclined to the horizontal at an angle of alpha. So, this angle here is alpha, okay. So, and it says tan alpha is equal to three quarters. Tan alpha is equal to three quarters. So, let's just make a little right angle triangle. Call this alpha. Tan alpha is opposite over adjacent. So tan alpha is three quarters. That means the sine, this, mean, this must be five because Pythagoras is a right angle triangle that we drew here. So sine alpha therefore must be three over five. And cosine alpha must be four over five. Okay? Um, and the second plane, all right, so the second plane is inclined to the horizontal at an angle of beta. Okay, so if we've got beta here, It says tan beta is equal to, this time, 4 over 3. Tan beta is equal to 4 over 3. So that means the opposite, that's 4, and the adjacent is 3. The hypotenuse is still 5. But that means now that sine, uh, sine of beta is 4 fifths. And the cosine of beta is 3 fifths. Okay, so that's what we can derive from that information given. Then it tells us particle P is on the first plane and particle Q is on the second plane. First plane, second plane, with the string taut. That means there's tension in the string, and the tension as it's one string and it's inextensible, the tension is the same um, in these two parts of the string. The tension is the same. Okay. Now, question says, the first plane is rough, and the coefficient of friction between P and the plane is a quarter, and the second plane is smooth. So we have here a rough plane, the first plane, the one where P is on. So the coefficient of friction here is a quarter. The second, sp the, the second plane is smooth. And it says also that the system is in le limiting equilibrium. That means it's just about to move. And it says, given that P is on the point of slipping down the first plane, find the value of M. Okay. So it's just about to move the system. All right. And the first plane is rough and the second is smooth. Okay, so let's now s let's start putting some of the f other forces. You, okay, if it's on the plane, it's on the point of slipping down the plane. If it's on the point, if P is on the point of slipping down, okay, and there's friction on this plane, that means friction must be acting the opposite direction. Must be acting up. So there must be friction acting up. Now, because there's friction, and we know that it's in limiting equilibrium, means it's just about to move, we know friction has re reached its maximum value. So this is, this is a maximum friction, which is mu times r. So we need to find the r of p. We need to find the re reaction force at this point here, because that will help us with the friction. Okay, so I need to find what that r is. Okay, so let's start resolving the forces that we have, um, like, for example, the weight of this p. You've got this direction and that direction. Same thing here. This direction and that direction. Okay, so what we have here is okay. Remember that th this is basically the same as beta. So that angle there is beta. Okay, the angle there is beta. All right. So we got here mg times sine beta. And here you have mg times cosine theta. Beta. And here we have, um, this is alpha. Okay, remember this is, this is like alpha there, right? So that's alpha. That's 4G cosine alpha, and we're going into the angles, cosine. And here's 4G times sine alpha. Okay, and we need to, f we need to now find 
uh, the value of m, okay? So we need to do some resolving of the forces, okay? Um, we don't need the r here because this is a smooth plane, so let's look at um, q first. Let's look at q, or let's look at p because we've got all the values for p, okay? Um, let's look at p. Let's deal with p first and then q. So let's look at p. If I resolve the forces uh, perpendicular to the plane first, Okay, look at P perpendicular to the plane. We have R equals 4G cosine alpha. Okay, R, e R equals 4G times cosine of alpha. And we know that cosine alpha is equal to 4 fifths. So it's, it's going to be 8, 16 over 5G. So R is equal to 16 over 5G. Why? Because cosine theta cosine alpha, sorry, is equal to 4 fifths. So that's going to be 4g times 4 fifths, which is 16 over 5g. I'm leaving that form for now. Um, and if I now resolve, now it's about, it's on the point of slipping down the plane. So I'll take down as positive, down the slope as positive. Okay, so you've got 4g sine alpha, um, and it's in equilibrium, it's not moving yet, so no acceleration. So it's equal to f max plus t. Okay, so 4g sine alpha is equal to f max plus the tension in the string. So we know that sine alpha is 3 fifths, so 3 fifths times 4 is going to give you 12 over, f 12 over 5 g, okay, because we know that sine alpha was 3 fifths, wasn't it? So 3 fifths times 4 is going to give you 12 over 5. Um, F max is mu r, so it's mu, now remember mu is a quarter, okay, so it's equal to mu times, so it's a quarter times, okay, remember F m equals mu r, so you're going to have a quarter times r, which is 16 over 5g, plus t, okay, so we can work out what the tension is in the string using this, you see. So that 4 and that 16 cancel out. So you have 12 over 5G minus 4 over 5G is equal to T. So T is equal to 8 over 5G. Okay, so that's the tension in the, in the string. And now we can hopefully use that to sort out what M is by looking at the forces on Q. On Q, you have basically, uh, if you resolve down the plane, um, parallel to the plane, mg sine beta equals T. Okay, so smooth plane, there's no friction or anything involved, so mg sine beta is equal to T, because it's not moving, it's an equilibrium. So mg sine beta must equal T, because it's on the point of moving, right? Now sine beta, if we remember, I think it was four fifths, Sine beta, we said was four fifths, that's right. So sine beta is four fifths. Okay, so sine beta is four fifths. So you have m, uh, so you have four fifths times mg equals t. All right, so now we know t is eight fifths g, so we can just uh, use that, uh, substitute that in, instead of, so you have four fifths mg is equal to Eight, fifth, eight fifths G. So now we can find what M is. G's cancel out, fives cancel out. M is equal to eight divided by four, which is two. So it's two kg. M is equal to two kilograms. And that's part A done, and part B I will do in the next video.